This is the dilapidated temple, nestled within the Ashina outskirts. You will be coming here a lot to invest in your character, because there are more resource systems in Sekiro than ever before. Let's break it down so that you're ready on day one. This is the Sculptor, your savior after your arm is severed. And when it comes to your prosthetic arm, he's your guy. If you find a new attachment out in the world, come here to get it fitted, and then you can choose three attachments to equip in your inventory screen, and this allows you to quick swap between them out in the world. And after defeating Gyobu, the demon, you'll acquire the mechanical barrel, which unlocks an upgrade path for every single prosthetic tool you own. And with crafting materials like gunpowder or scrap metal, you can improve these weapons in really interesting ways. This is a pre-release video, so I don't know them all, but I do know this is Longspark, an upgraded firecracker that compounds gunpowder for a longer bloom. There's Gouging Shuriken, which allows your shurikens to hit multiple times after they land, and it seems you can even imbue your weapons with elements like this purple stuff and fire as well. There are a lot of upgrade paths in Sekiro, and Luckily for you, there's a guy in the hub world who is more than happy to help you test them, and maybe one day they'll even kill him. There are three training options here, for now anyway. There's attack, step dodge, and deflect. Deflect is by far the most important thing you can do in Sekiro. Make sure, if you're a Souls player, to kick yourself every time you dodge when you really should have been deflecting. It's really hard to overcome that muscle memory. And deflect is so good because in addition to avoiding damage, you actually deal posture damage to your enemy if you time your block correctly. And you can actually deplete even more posture if you successfully deflect multiple attacks in a row. Fill an enemy's posture bar completely and you'll be rewarded with a death blow. Time your block incorrectly and you actually won't take damage, but you will eventually be knocked off balance, which requires you to spam block or dodge to get your posture back. Attacking is really important for you as well because some enemies have incredible posture. They have these defenses that you feel like you can't get past unless you deal health damage because then they'll start to take more posture damage as they weaken. The way you deal health damage often is to step dodge away from an attack and then counter with your own attack when they're not blocking. And if you're met with this symbol, that means an attack is perilous and it means it's not easily blocked. Jump or dash away from it, depending on the attack. You have three buttons for avoiding damage now, and you need to think pretty critically about when you're using them correctly and when you're using them incorrectly, because no matter how much you upgrade your character, and there are a lot of ways to upgrade your character, but no matter how many times you do this, you'll just keep on dying if your fundamental combat skills aren't good enough. Killing enemies will also net you gold and experience, resources that will be halved upon death, unless you receive unseen aid. Unseen Aid is an RNG effect that reduces how much you lose upon death, and you can see that percentage chance in your checkpoint menu here. But be warned, because the more you die in Sekiro, the more the people around you will get a disease called Dragon Rot. This Rot Essence screen will pop up for each character, and the more that get infected, the less likely you are to receive this Unseen Aid. But there's good news, because you can cure it. Later in the game, Emma will ask you to go and get a blood sample from someone who has Rot Essence. And once you have that blood sample, she'll hand you a Dragon's Blood Droplet and a Recovery Charm, which, when you use them both together at the Buddha statue, they allow you to cure the Dragon Rot of the victim whose blood you acquired. This grants you favor with the gods once more and increases your chance of receiving Unseen Aid again. We'll give Dragon Rot the attention it deserves in this story video coming soon, so subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, once you accrue enough experience, whether it's from not dying or from receiving unseen aid, you'll have a few points to invest in your character's own skill trees. These are accessible at the Buddha statues, but only when you've unlocked that skill tree with an esoteric text. The first esoteric text unlocks the Shinobi skill tree, and I think it's given to you by the sculptor after you visit the Harata Estates, because there you remember the shinobi you once were. The shinobi tree unlocks combat arts, which are used by pressing L1 and R1 at the same time. This one is called Whirlwind Strike, which can let you cleave down multiple enemies 
In addition to this, of course, there are also passive abilities, things like decreasing your presence so your stealth gets stronger, stuff like that. And once you reach the end, there's actually a final powerful combat ability that unlocks. The one at the end of the shinobi skill tree, which I grinded out, is called Shadow Rush. It's this long, powerful thrust that uses an impaled opponent as a platform to vault into the skies. Sounds awesome. I didn't get time to try it though. I speculate that every skill tree ends in a powerful combat art like this. I think it's something to help you define your playstyle and reward you for investing in a skill tree, and something that represents the skill tree you've chosen. The second skill tree is the prosthetic skill tree, and this unlocks as soon as you craft three prosthetic weapons. The first prosthetic is in the Ashina outskirts, and there are two more in the Hirata estates. We used to think the third skill tree was going to be called Samurai, but turns out it's called the Ashina skill tree, and it still focuses on sword combat and posture, unlocking combat arts like Ichimonji, a powerful overhead slice that restores your posture as you step in to attack. I reckon there's going to be more skill trees that you can unlock, or at least they're probably going to add more with DLC later down the line. Experience is also more interesting than you'd expect, because you lose half of it when you die, and because Sekiro is bloody tough, you actually have to have a really flawless run before you actually accrue enough experience. Some abilities cost five full experience bars, which means you should always be conscious of how much experience you have and how much experience you need, because you might want to take a trip back to a Buddha statue, I found. Most enemies also drop gold, called Sen in Sekiro, which can be sucked up to your character by holding down the square button, something I guarantee you're gonna forget after you wipe a whole squad of enemies. Try to remember, because gold can let you buy consumables, it can let you upgrade your prosthetic arm, but most importantly, perhaps, it also is used to buy spirit emblems which are bought at the Buddha statues for 10 gold a pop. Buddha statues are also where you increase your character's core strength. Every mini boss drops prayer beads, and when you have four prayer beads, you can actually use them to increase your vitality and your posture. It's a really big increase, so you should kill mini bosses. In addition, after you defeat a main boss, it seems that you receive a memory of that battle. Confront that memory at a Buddha statue and you'll gain an extra attack power point, which means you deal more damage and you deal more posture damage, so OP. And there's another important Buddha statue. It's sitting right next to the sculptor on the left when you enter the temple. Here, you can make offerings, it seems, and the great Buddha will then stir your thoughts, allowing you to awaken in a different location, locations that apparently existed long ago. The first offering you find is the Young Lord's Bell, which is acquired when you talk to this old woman here, and it will take you back to the Harata Estates three years past. This place contains important story events, it contains prosthetic weapons, and it also contains Gourd Seeds, which is something that you give to Emma, and they allow you to upgrade your healing flask. While you're here in the Harata Estates, keep an eye out for Treasure Carp, they're these enormous pink fish that you have to chase down like crystal lizards and kill them before they disappear. They drop scales, which can be taken to Pot Noble Harunaga, found off to the right of the Harata Estates Bridge. This guy sells divine grass, which restores vitality, a dragon's blood droplet, which cures dragon rot, withered red gourd, which allows your gourd to heal burn damage, and a mysterious mask fragment, and a floating passage text, which unlocks a graceful combat art. Throughout your journey, you can also develop latent skills. Our first example of this is Shinobi Medicine Rank 1, which players unlocked after they defeated the Chained Ogre. So the way you learn such techniques, it says, is to be gravely injured time and time again by worthy opponents. I think this means you just have to kill mini-bosses, but we'll see. Get too injured and you'll die. But in Sekiro, you get a couple of second chances. There's two nodes of resurrection. This one, with a snowflake symbol, can only be restored by resting at an idol, 
Remember, you have to manually press rest now when you sit down at a checkpoint. There's another node of resurrection though, it's got a leaf symbol on it, and this one is earned back when you kill enemies and the circle will fill as you kill more and more. This might lead you to believe that you have two resurrections, and you do. But when you die, a black strike through will prevent you from taking that second resurrection for a little while. From what I can tell, the black strike through is only removed when you kill around five regular enemies, or it's removed when you take off one boss health bar. This means you're incentivized to kill enemies and restore both nodes of resurrection before you get into a boss fight if you're having trouble. Apparition type enemies are also a thing, and they can only be defeated by using a divine confetti consumable. Speaking of which, the terror meter is related to these evil enemies. It's an effect that is imparted by horrific enemies whenever you take damage, or when you don't successfully deflect their attacks. Fill this bar completely and you'll take a huge chunk of your health off, maybe even an instant kill. So if you don't have a fear reducing item on hand, the best thing to do is hide and regain your courage. If you're having difficulty with an encounter, eat some sugar. These have different, very simple combat effects. The red one, Ako, boosts damage. The gold, Gokan, boosts posture. The blue, Ungo, boosts defense. And the green, Gachin, boosts stealth. The cool thing about these is, now that Sekiro comes with a pause button, you're actually encouraged to scrounge through your inventory, finding the perfect item for the perfect situation. You don't have to fumble your quick select bar anymore, which is nice. For post-combat situations, there are water balloons. There are two I know of so far, there's a green one that boosts item discovery, and there's a gold one which boosts gold, there's probably a blue one which boosts experience. Use these. Whew. There's a lot of stuff, so uh, thanks for watching, and if you're still not confident, watch this video where I'm gonna go over some OP tips and tricks instead of the fundamentals which we just covered. Click the notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever a new video goes out, and you won't miss out on any Sekiro stuff. I'll see you then.